Hello and welcome to the South Yorkshire Schools Climate Conference hosted by Schools Climate Education South Yorkshire. My name is Sarah Storey and I am the Active Travel Commissioner in South Yorkshire. I've been working in this role for just over two years now and it's always a delight to be able to contribute to events like this. This event provides you with an array of wonderful workshops addressing different aspects of the climate and nature emergencies with some of them live and some of them virtual for you to engage with. The organisers have pulled together some fantastic content which is bound to spark your attention and create lively debate. So I hope you enjoy interacting and that you feel energised and motivated by the work being done and that you will be able to contribute to. To say working in active travel is varied would be something of an understatement. And when I took on the role, I didn't realise just how far reaching the benefits of our programme would be. Transport is the largest emitting sector of greenhouse gases in the UK, contributing a little over a quarter of domestic emissions in 2019. And so it's vital this is addressed if the UK is going to deliver the government's net zero ambition and enable us to leave a better world for the generations who come behind us. In South Yorkshire alone, it is estimated that prior to the pandemic, when working habits were more normal, around 40% of journeys to work that were a kilometre or less were still driven. That's the equivalent of a 10 to 15 minute walk. So clearly there's a huge amount of work needed to ensure people feel confident enough to leave their cars behind. When I started this role, I saw huge potential for change and to deliver Mayor Dan Jarvis's transport strategy that focuses on walking and cycling in a way that has never been seen before. We have a strategy to 2040 to build a connected network of walking and cycling routes, but most importantly, a set of standards that will ensure these routes are accessible to people using non-standard cycles, mobility scooters, and for parents using double or triple buggies. So often it is these groups of people that are excluded from plans and given little choice on how they'd like to move around. So it's imperative that if we want people to stop driving so often that they have to, the choice to decide how else they'd like to get from A to B. Not only does increasing the number of journeys people make by active means help reduce emissions from vehicles, it also helps to build a healthier and happier population who are more likely to engage and care about the world around them. You may hear people talk about the importance of us all switching to electric vehicles and how this will be the answer to decarbonising transport and ensuring we reach the targets. But what is often forgotten is the fact that we also need to reduce the total number of vehicles on our roads. There is an energy and an environmental cost to the upkeep and repair of roads, the manufacture of vehicles and the disposal of, ba disposal of batteries. Heavier vehicles causing the most damage to our roads are also a problem. But interestingly, electric vehicles are not entirely emission free and the wear of brakes and gears and the particles released from the braking process mean that electric vehicles are part of the solution but must still be reserved for journeys where it is genuinely not possible to take a more sustainable mode. In urban areas with slow moving traffic, high levels of braking is required and it's easy to see that journeys like this are just not only an inefficient way to move around but they are also still causing damage to the places where those journeys are being made. Health and well-being is an often overlooked part of protecting our world but it makes sense to me that if we want people to feel happier and more connected to the place where they live, work and play then they will take pride in protecting it and trying to improve it for those around them. Similarly, the importance of accessibility is not always grasped, yet around one in five people across the UK are estimated to be living with a disability or a long-term health condition that affects the way they are able to get around. Designing public space to accommodate a changing population, perhaps also a new way of working if the traditional office-based work can now be undertaken from home, means that we need to ensure we have space for people for, for a variety of different purposes. The pandemic has taught people about the importance of having and preserving space and of how much more pleasant a place is when birdsong is heard and about the importance of green space for clarity of thought and stress reduction. Everything that we know that is good for us as humans is good for wildlife and we shouldn't underestimate the scale of the role that we have as individuals. 
Aside from working in sustainable transport, I've been involved in elite sport for almost 30 years. And throughout my time as an athlete, I have utilised the concept of the aggregation of marginal gains. The idea that by making small improvements to everything you have control over, the combination of those improvements will lead to a greater overall gain. This is undoubtedly a valuable, a valuable approach for each of us when thinking about our role in helping to improve our world and how we can contribute to a much bigger task. If everyone pledged to walk or cycle just one extra journey a week or a fortnight, then the total gain from that would be enormous. If we all pledged to only boil the exact amount of water that we need for one cup of tea, or that we all pledge to switch off every light when we no longer need it, the gain from that is also significant too. Pledging to do this puts you on the same team as everyone else who's pledging too. Your combined efforts to contribute to being sustainable won't be in vain. It can often feel like you're the only one doing something. When you see someone throwing their litter out of a car window, or you can see a neighbour driving 500 metres to connect, co collect a pint of milk. It's easy to judge the actions of others and forget to control what you can. But that's another mantra from elite sport. Control the controllables. Don't worry about others and focus on your own behaviour and those that are on your own team. You could always offer to run the errands of the person who might otherwise drive the short distance or offer to walk with them to show them the route and help build their confidence in being more active. But never forget the power that you have to influence the adults and the other people in your household and wider family unit. You really do have an incredible amount of influence and you should never underestimate that. Quite often as people, we are stuck in the default behaviour of something that we've always done because that's how we were taught to do it. Over the course of the last 50 years or more, We've designed our towns and cities around the convenience of people who choose to drive. But now is the time to adjust that expectation and to spread the inconvenience of travel delay. By doing so, we'll create a different environment in which we can live, work and play. Our environment can truly influence our behaviours. By creating space for people, improving air quality, reducing noise pollution and enabling access for all, the world can recover from the damage it has been inflicted upon it and we can all have a small but influential part to play. Throughout this event, you'll be hearing for some, from some fantastic speakers and have the opportunity to engage in workshops from, from providers across the UK. I hope you make the most of the time that you have with these people and get a real sense of how influential and powerful you are in shaping this agenda and the direction of it for the future. If you like what you're involved with, then you can also have the opportunity to join the schools already in the Schools Climate Education South Yorkshire Network. This will give you the chance to engage beyond this event, celebrate the work you're already doing, share and collaborate with other schools and learn from examples across our region. Thank you for coming today and thank you for helping to shape the world that we will all enjoy tomorrow.